My name is Vedran Savic and I work at the Heart Valve Clinic at the University Hospital of Zurich. Today I'm going to lecture about transcatheter mitral valve cord repair. Mitral regurgitation is one of the most common valvular disorders with a prevalence of 2% in the general population and of 7% in the population with more than 75 years. The most common cause of MR in developed countries is represented by the degenerative mitral valve disease in which there is myxomathous degeneration of the mitral leaflets and elongated and redundant chordal apparatus. Patients presenting with severe primary MR have a negative prognosis, leading to reduction of survival mortality rate more than 6.3% per year compared with the expected survival rate. For primary degenerative mitral disease, surgical valve repair represents currently the standard of care. Treatment of asymptomatic patients with severe MR involve centers of excellence in which successful repair reaches more than 95% and surgical mortality less than 1% will represent the ideal setting to manage this disease. The prevalence of mitral prolapse is 2 to 3% and its most common complication is MR. The most common etiology of mitral prolapse derives from the myxomathous degeneration, which is an intermediate form of diseases which range from fibroelastic deficiency with thin leaflets and limited prolapse to more severe forms of multiple bileaflet prolapse with excessive tissue like a Barlow's disease. A severe form is represented by leaflet flail where no co-optation can be detected during the systole. Two-dimensional and Doppler echocardiography have become standard for the assessment of patients presenting with degenerative MR for quantification of the severity of regurgitation and intervention planning. Transthoracic echocardiography and transesophageal echocardiography are complementary imaging methods. The latter is fundamental for intraprocedural guidance during transcatheter cordal repair. Cardiac multi-slice computed tomography and cardiac magnetic resonance imaging offer important complementary information during preoperative planning. Surgical intervention, repair or replacement is indicated in patients with severe MR and symptoms or left ventricular dysfunction, ejection fraction of less than 60% or end systolic diameter more than 40 mm. Surgical repair is the preferred treatment for patients with primary MR and is associated with better outcomes than mitral replacement. Mitral regurgitation can usually be repaired with different techniques, either resection of the flail and prolapsing leaflet segment or by using artificial PDFE cords. The techniques vary according to the center and the preference and or experience of the surgeons, but the principal ones are the von Oppel and Morse loop technique, the simple core deplacement with atrial side knots, the David's multiple interdependent loop technique, posterior leaflet prolapse is the most common pathology causing severe MR and has higher success of durable repair than anterior leaflet disease or severe bileaflet disease. Originally described by Freider and Sousa, this technique has grown in popularity over the past several years. Artificial cordy with PDFE is currently a very common surgical repair technique that can enhance the zone of co-optation of the MV when compared to leaflet resection, enhancing the valve performance. Currently, artificial cordy with PDFE is the technique perhaps the most adopted to correct anterior leaflet prolapse. Virtually artificial corda without leaflet resection can repair all the prolapsing valves independent of which leaflet or segment is involved and it is ideal for minimally invasive approach. One of the advantages of artificial corda is their versatility, considering that corda elongation is a major cause of MR in degenerative pathology. They can be applied to almost any pathology including systolic anterior motion, Barlow disease, anterior and posterior mitral leaflet pathology, pediatric and adult population, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and others.
One of the largest series of patients was described by Salvador reporting an operative mortality of less than 1% in a cohort of 608 patients undergoing MV repairs using artificial cordy. Survival was 84% at 15 years. Similar early mortality rates have been described by other series ranging from 0 to 4.2%. Perrier et colleagues report a 10-year survival of 84% in a cohort of 225 patients following cordy implantation. These results validated artificial cordy mortality outcomes as comparable with classical techniques at long term. An important paper from David and colleagues reporting the results with PDFE cordy repair showed that NV function remains stable in most patients during the first 20 years after operation. At 18 years follow-up, the freedom from reoperation on the NV was 90.2%, the freedom from recurrent severe MR was 91%, while the freedom from moderate or severe MR was 67.5%. At Cox regression analysis, the isolated prolapse of the anterior leaflet was predictive of MV reoperation. The biggest issue with cordal repair is their adequate length determination and fixation during the cardioplegic arrest, which can be particularly challenging on the anterior leaflet. The use of preformed fixed length cordal loops may be helpful in this regard. As a general rule, it is recommended that for posterior prolapse and cordal rupture, artificial corda with a length of 12 to 14 millimeters are employed, while for the anterior leaflet, their length should be 20 to 22 millimeters. The development of artificial corda techniques accelerated in part due to their proposed applications in the setting of minimally invasive MV repair. In this setting, there is a large but mixed experience available in literature. Despite the heterogeneity of these studies, it is possible to conclude that the outcomes with artificial cordia implantation using minimally invasive approach offers the same risk and efficacy profile of conventional MV surgery. A great effort has been made in the development of catheter-based technique for mitral cordial repair. This method applies all the basic steps of the conventional surgery on the beating heart without the use of cardiopulmonary bypass. The first pioneering preclinical experiences of transcatheter neocorda implantation was performed by Maizano and colleagues in which delivery and adjustment of cordial length after implantation was done on the beating heart. By using this feature, the surgeon could correct neocordial length under physiologic conditions to improve prolapse correction. There are currently three devices that enable transcatheter mitral corda implantation. Neocord system, which received the CE mark in 2013, and it is based on a transapical approach. Harpoon mitral valve repair system, which did not receive the CE mark yet, it is based on the transapical approach. Hoard art system, which is based on a fully transcatheter approach. Neocord DS1000 is based on surgical background and its catheter-based technique of implantation of neocord allowing treatment of degenerative MR. According to the mode of application, it is a minimally invasive system with adjustable PDFE sutures. It is implanted through a small incision on the beating heart with the transapical approach. The procedure is carried out under the echocardiographic guidance. Anchor is placed on the leaflet on one side and on the left ventricular myocardium on the other side. Neocord is then secured under the proper tension in order to adjust the artificial cordal length. The device has obtained CE mark in 2012 after the initial results were reported in the feasibility tech trial, where an overall reduction of MR to less or equal 2 plus in 86.7% among 30 patients has been described. So far, the device has been used in more than 500 patients. The complexity of the lesion is clearly affecting the reduction of MR. For example, a treatment of isolated P2 segment flail or prolapse with Neocord DS1000, one year freedom from MR recurrence, mitral surgery, mortality, rehospitalization, and stroke was 94%. 
However, in the presence of more complex anatomy, bileaflet or commissural involvement or treatment of multiple posterior leaflet segments with prolapse or flail freedom from the composite endpoint was 63% and 82% respectively. There is currently an ongoing clinical investigation of Neocord in the randomized trial in the United States called Randomized Trial of the Neocord DS1000 System versus Open Surgical Repair. Greatest limitation of the current generation of the device lies in its transapical axis. The device requires multiple entries and exits through the apex and is delivered sheetless. In the treatment of multi-segment disease or when there is a need for multiple cordy, there is also an increased risk of bleeding. Neocord implantation has been shown as a safe and feasible procedure that shortens the time of operation in comparison to open heart and the repair. In an early feasibility trial in patients with degenerative MR and posterior leaflet prolapse, the Harpoon device has been investigated. The Harpoon TSD-5 device is a 14 French system designed for transapical multiple PDFE implantation. Unlike the neocord procedure, where the surgical approach is rather lateral, the apex is reached through a more anterior incision, and the device is inserted into the ventricle more closely to the left anterior descendant coronary artery. Selection of the entry site of the left ventricle and navigation towards the MV apparatus is performed using biplane echo view at mid-commissural and long-axis views. Results of the initial feasibility trial evaluating Harpoon TSD-5 device showed that among 30 patients, 3 patients required conversion to open mitral surgery. Neither major adverse events nor deaths occurred during the study. At one month, in 24 out of 27 patients, MR was mild or even smaller, and in 3 out of 27 patients, moderate. At 6 months, MR was mild or smaller in 22 out of 26 patients, moderate was in 2 out of 26 patients, and severe in 2 out of 26 patients. A favorable cardiac remodeling, decrease of LV and LA volumes, and as well as mitral annulus diameter reduction were reported. Crucial patient selection is the critical point to both cordal implantation devices. Preferable pathology of the mitral valve for a successful and durable repair is a monosegmental pathology, limited LV dilatation and without or mild annular dilatation. Furthermore, what is different from the surgical cordal repair is that the distal extremity of the PDFE suture is not fixed to the papillary muscles as in native anatomy, but it is fixed to the apical axis. Consequences of this should be investigated at long-term follow-up. Cord art system has been designed to implant pre-measured neocorda in order to overcome some of the limitations of previously mentioned devices. Transatrial or transeptal antegrade approach is used to place the neocorda. Anchoring system is simple, with which the distal cord is applied in its anatomical position, directly to the papillary muscle. For this type of therapy, multimodality imaging guidance could theoretically play a central role integrating echo and computed tomography floral fusion imaging to determine trajectories and orientation. With preoperative echo or with CT, the size of the implant can be determined. Preclinical validation has been done and first in human implant with surgical direct implantation of the device has been recently announced, reporting good outcomes. The Chagall trial will be the prospective multicenter study which will establish the safety and the effectiveness of the cord art system. The progress of transcatheter therapies and, in particular, of the implantation of mitral cord is constant and under continuous evolution. The major limitation lies in the absence of combined treatment of mitral annulus dilatation fundamental in most patients with degenerative mitral disease. 
The surgical results of MV repair without aneuloplasty are unsatisfactory in long term and the initial experience with neocord also disadvantages patients with annular dilatation. A critical factor is therefore the selection and early treatment of the patient in a phase of disease in which prolapse and or flail is still the prevalent pathology in the absence or near annular dilatation. Leaflet to analyst index less than 1.4 defined as the ratio between the sum of anterior leaflet length and posterior leaflet length over anterior posterior length can be used as reliable predictor to identify patients without annular dilatation. The LAI identifies the quantity of overlapping leaflet tissue that will represent the potential co-optation surface after the correction. This excess of leaflet tissue will constitute the potential co-optation surface after an effective restoration of the posterior leaflet movement, for example using the neocord repair system. In the near future, with increasing clinical evidence, improvements in multimodality, imaging guidance, and clearer indications, it will be thinkable to combine, in most cases, the treatment of leaflets with direct mitral annuloplasty whenever this later is needed. In primary degenerative mitral regurgitation, surgical repair with artificial corda, often through a minimally invasive approach, provides excellent outcomes. Transcatheter mitral cordal devices enable targeted and less invasive repair, providing promising initial results. Although in the early clinical experience, further investigation with longer-term follow-up and direct comparison with conventional mitral valve surgery is necessary to validate the role of transcatheter corda in the armamentarium of multidisciplinary mitral therapies.